to Atlanta Life. I'm your co-host, Evangelist Jordan Coletta with JBB Ministries and the Jordan B Band. We are so glad that you've chosen yeah. to join us tonight. And I am blessed to be able to co-host with... Renee M. Beavers of the Rich Relationships Podcast. Amen. Amen. It's so good to co-host with you tonight, Renee. It's great to always co-host with you. Amen. Thank you. You know, tonight we have just such a fulfilling uh, show. You know, one of the common themes I think we're going to hear tonight through our guests is, I think, an important, important, important message. And that is, you know, in our faith walk, there's times that it's easy to kind of forget that we need to stand yes. on the faith. We need to stand on the promise that the Lord says, you ask and you will receive. You have needs, you bring them to me. Mm -hmm. And the Lord wants us to bring our needs to him. And to be peaceful about it too, exactly. even though the, the, the prayer isn't necessarily answered yet. So we're gonna hear that. So now we get to listen to an awesome group, uh, Ayana McDonald singing, Your Great Name. Mm -hmm. Take it away. Hallelujah. How many know that there's power in the name of Jesus? Tonight we honor the name of our God for there's nobody like him and there's no one above him. We declare we love to call your name.
atmosphere is heavy with God's presence. Amen. Amen. Ayana McDonald, that was amazing. Your amazing group of worshipers bringing us into God's presence. And the next guest is very appropriate after that song because his mission, his desire is to bring people into right relationship with the Word of God. And it's our wonderful guest, Michael Grady. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Wasn't that Thank wonderful? You. It was wonderful. It, it sets the mood for us. I, yes. love, I love the singing part. Singing brings us into worship. Yes, it mm. does. And, uh, I like to think that this whole session is, is about worship and it learning is. about it. And Amen. Uh, m music really does just somehow God gave us that to really yes. uh, wake up our soul sometimes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Well yes. said. Yes, yes, yes. We're so excited about what you're doing. And your mission, your passion is to really help people. Um, Matthew 6 says, um, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all these things will be added onto you. And the part of the righteousness you want us to seek is the word of God. And so I really want you to just kind of share your story about what you, how you do that, how you take something that's sometimes complicated and ignored and misunderstood and you make it applicable and understandable and enjoyable through your books. Amen. Well, my history goes back when I was five years old, my mother started telling me Bible stories. <laughs> uh, and when I was 12, I did something at the church and I asked her if I could get something for it. It was a children's Bible and she said, I will get that for you if you promise to read it every day. Mm. Wonderful. Uh, and I Smart was one mom. of those crazy kids that did that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so at 17, she said, Michael, you've learned to read the Bible. Now it's time to study the Bible. Wow. And she gave me a book by M. R. DeHaan, who had Portraits of Christ in Genesis, and uh, just took me alive. I'd always liked the Old Testament stories, and it just brought together. He tied the Old and the New Testament together like I'd never seen before. Wow. And it's just... Um, so uh, it really got me studying it, and then I wanted to share it with what Wonderful. I had. And so I, I, I believe God called me to be a teacher, and I believe I've tried to fulfill that ministry. And so over 35 years, probably even more than that, I've been teaching both adults and children. Uh, I had a passion for the children because I felt like the 8 to 12-year-olds were old enough to understand what you're saying, but not so old to think they knew everything. <laughs> <laughs> and so I wanted to, I wanted a time at that, that group, uh, but I also enjoyed teaching the adults. And um, we talked a little bit about ahead of time is that it is interesting that people come to church and they talk about how important the Bible is, mm -hmm. but they don't read it. Mm -hmm. And if you don't read it, you don't know it. Yes. Right. And I felt like that it was a wonderful book to read and it had, it was a life-giving event for me and, and I believe for anybody else that would get into it because it just, like music, if you really get into the Word, it yes. gets down to the bottom of our soul. Yes. And uh, I, I have that same kind of passion for it. And so I wanted to share that with other people and they didn't seem to, to know the Bible. And when I asked them why, uh, it was really consistently three, three answers always came back. Uh, one is that they couldn't understand it. Two, they felt it was boring. And three, they felt like the Old Testament was not relevant. Mm. And uh, I, I wanted to change that concept, pre precept. And so I started sharing it. And over the years, I realized that more I wanted to broaden than just the people I could teach there in my home church. And got the passion about writing a book. Uh, uh, because I wanted families to read the Bible together. Wonderful. Uh, teaching the young kids and teaching their parents and teaching the adults. Uh, I, I felt like that there could be something that would really be something for them. Uh, there's children's Bible study books galore, there are adult Bible study books, but there was not one that really the family could read together. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so uh, I chose to, to write a book retelling the Old Testament stories. 
Uh, I wanted to make them easier to understand, uh, teach how, uh, and also make them more conversational, more engaging, so that they wouldn't call it boring, and then teach how relevant they were. I thought the Old Testament stories were, were tremendously well relevant because they teach us about people in our lives. People today are n no different than people were 4,000, 6,000 years ago. Exactly. And, and so I believe that they teach us stories. And, and as I've often shared, I believe that God chose those stories. I think they're real, they're history, but I believe he chose specific stories to teach us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so I wanted to share that with people. Long introduction, but that's... <laughs> Well, you know, I think really what's important here, and, 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 and you really make it understandable, mm -hmm. and, and that is, you know, when we think about our faith, right, I mean, really, what, what do we draw on? I mean, how do we understand right. what, what's available to us, what we should be doing? And what I love about, you know, kind of the, your approach is you make kind of things that are difficult, mm -hmm. A, understandable, Mm -hmm. And then the other key thing I think is, you know, when we say we're going to stand on our faith, right, we want to stand on this, this principle, this promise, you know, it's, it's sometimes difficult to go back and say, well, what, what is it, what is the promise? I mean, I, I understand the major promises, but there's more promises and there's more guidelines and there's more things that we need to be aware of. And so you break those things down. And we were talking a little bit about that earlier, and I loved a couple of your uh, examples, and I'd love you to share a couple of those examples because I think our viewers could really benefit to understand, you know, a little bit of detail. What do you mean by, you know, when you look back in the Old Testament? It just seems, when I read it, difficult. But but you could kind of bring a couple of those things to life for us, and I think it'd be very helpful. It is exciting to see them come to life yeah. and, and put them in there. And I realize there are things in the Old Testament that get a little bit boring and hard to read. Uh, but there's so much rich, richness in them, and particularly in the stories themselves. And you know that there, there's things about my family that I wouldn't have told if I was God. <laughs> I mean, there, 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 there's some difficult things. Keep that and so, quiet. It, that's, <laughs> I mean, there's soap opera stuff in here. Yeah. But but it's life, it and is. that's what God's trying to tell us. And we start in there with it, and and I, I believe that goes in there that we never. God chose from the very beginning when we fail, He's there to pick us up. Amen. Yes. Uh, Adam uh, chose to eat the apple with, with, or the fruit with Eve, and yet immediately God provided a plan of redemption yes, for them. It, it, was, it was right there. He was there to pick, us, pick them up. Uh, he did not let them stumble and fall. Uh, they had to pay the consequences, but he, was, he already provided, and from the very beginning, He said, I plan to bring the, the seed of the woman, which I believe was Jesus. That was the prophecy that He revealed right. out of that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, in, in the, they teach us uh, stories of life. There was jealousy, Cain and Abel were jealousy, and we can learn how brothers are jealous of one another. Uh, there's, there's stories of favoritism. Uh, Joseph, coat of many colors Joseph. I always like to call him the coat of many colors because we get him confused with the uh, New Testament Joseph. But uh, he, he was a favorite of his father, and all the problems that came out were the, beyond that. But it was interesting to me, and, and Joseph, I, I think I shared, Joseph is, is probably my favorite Old Testament story yeah. because it's so real to life. It teaches us so many principles about what Joseph had to go through. Uh, through no fault of his own, he was sold into slavery. And he could have pouted, he could have complained, he could have blamed God, he could have mm -hmm. done anything, but he chose to work for, work for, the, for his, his master. He was a slave, and he chose to work for his master uh, in spite and do the best he could. And God rewarded him uh, by letting him be promoted to the keeper of the household. He wasn't going out of slavery, though. Isn't that a good principle for us to learn? Sometimes God does not deliver us from our problems. He helps them through them. Mm. And I think if we can understand that principle, we have a better concept of living this life because this life on earth is difficult. It is. Amen. And then uh, Joseph... Then, and how was he rewarded with all of his faithfulness? Mm -hmm. He was thrown into dungeon because he was accused of something he didn't do again. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you just sit there and listen to that story and say, I think I'd given up. <laughs> but Joseph chose to be the best prisoner you could be. In fact, he was able to get out of jail and help, not out of, jail, out of the dungeon, but out of the, his specific jail cell and, and run the jail. And it had never run smoother. Yeah. Uh, and so the life goes, and this was 13 years he endured this. 
And one day he was in jail. The next day he was prime minister of the greatest country wow. in the world at that time. Mm. And God does reward us if we're faithful to yeah. go through those things. I think God was preparing Joseph for those 13 years to be the ruler. Mm. So you can run, if you can run a jail or dungeon smoothly, you can probably run anything. <laughs> yes. uh, and then he had a chance to um, save it because of a famine that God provided. He was able to save his own brothers that sold him into slavery, mm. which I believe is what Jesus did. I believe these stories not only right. are relevant and practical for us, but they also, God's got a plan of salvation throughout. There's a thread throughout the Old Testament that God's plan of salvation is there for mankind throughout. Uh, and I just think that's exciting to know that, that he, he chose uh, what the, they came to him and uh, tried to keep him from, from taking revenge on them. And Joseph said, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. He didn't Amen. make any, he didn't make any bones about that what they did was evil. Right. But he understood that it was okay, right? Because God and so was willing to forgive and forget. Uh, and he said, in the end, he said, "I'm in God's place." Mm. And I just think that's so exciting to know. And and that's my goal is that exactly. I want to be in God's place. Wonderful. Uh, and I believe tonight God's got me here for in His place here tonight. Amen. And I thank <laughs> you for allowing me to, to be here. Uh, I'm glad that you're so, here. So and the stories are just continue with richness and like that. They're just wonderful stories that teach us about life and teach us about God's plan for us. And, and, and what a wonderful word we can do. Yeah. But you talked about faith. You can't know what faith is without getting into the word because that's well what said. God teaches us. Well said. We, we, can, we, we need our faith because mm -hmm. there's so many difficult circumstances that we are faced with. Uh, I don't know the, why we're faced with them all, but I do believe it builds our character and that God is gonna have that usefulness for eternity. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing down here is useful but we need to know God's plan because uh, this world does not follow God's plan. Mm. It does not teach us God's way. Mm -hmm. And you, you, if you start relying, some things in this world seem fair and reasonable, but God says the they're end. not. Amen. The end. And you've got to be willing to stand firm in that faith and say, I believe God is in, has a reason for me not getting what I want or something happening or uh, for, for something that would seem reasonable to us, mm. that would be fair right. and just. Right. God says, that's not my best for you. Exactly. Right. And if you'll follow my that's best, beautiful. that's where, and, and I, we can't do that without knowing his word. And, and I've, hopefully this, uh, what I've tried to do with the book is to make the stories 15 minutes along a piece and to make them small, thought-provoking doses. Mm. Because sometimes it's hard for us to take on too much yes. yeah. and, and break them down. So if we can do it, um, but they're storytelling, they're conversational, they're easy reads. Wonderful. But uh, I had one of my 25-year-olds read it and said, I love the way you made it understandable, but it was deep enough to really, really uh, give me a depth of what God was trying to do for me. And, and that's the kinds of words that I'd love to Wonderful. hear. Um, but you can make it a Bible study because I list all the scriptures at the end of every story that I use to help tie the Old and New Testament together. Uh, so it can be a 15 minute discussion. I did it with my grandchildren. Uh -huh. Oh, that was my pleasure. That, oh, it was wonderful. worth writing the book to be able to sit down with my grandchildren and, and, awesome. and read them. Awesome. In fact, uh, my 16 year old was uh, 11 when I kind of finished nine to 11 when we, she was kind of my test case. And she will tell you she's part author of this thing oh, because she helped wow. me through it. That's so beautiful. That is awesome. It is, and so we had, uh, so they helped me with it. But so. It's 15 minute, 10 to 15 minute read, but 30 to 45 minutes if you study it to get, if you talk about it, make it conversational, mm -hmm. yep. which is what, that's what I wanted it to be. I ask questions during the story because I want them. Sometimes we'd get off the subject, but that was fine because yes. we were spending time together. Yeah. Absolutely. You understand? I mean, and the it, Lord's beautiful. time together. It was, yeah. and, and, and what a fine, and in fact, that's where the title came from. Uh, making God part of your family is reading it together. Uh, that's beautiful. Is, is wanting to do that together, but 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 it's God's word. Amen. That's beautiful. So how can people get in touch with you? Get connected with you? Get your books? Absolutely. And yes, I have, have a website. Have you come and speak at other places? Oh yes, absolutely. In fact, I share that. I'm I'm willing to go. Just like I rode from Florence, South Carolina here, Thank you. Uh, because it was <laughs> worth the trip to come down here. Yeah. Amen. And, uh, but I have a website. It's www. Uh, michaelgrady.org and that you can find out all about the book Wonderful. and a little bit more about the book and how you get it uh, is right there on the website That's and so uh, 
it's, it's, a great, uh, it's a great pleasure to be able to go out and share that and hear the words of people say that it did change uh, how they looked at things. That's, so. That's awesome. Yeah, I think we have like another minute or two. I, one of the things I want to make sure that I, I get us to talk just again briefly about is I know you've looked at the stats, the statistics around, you know, how many people are reading the Bible and, and in, in reviewing what you put together, um, it's clear that not only are a lot of people not reading it, but it's getting worse. And so, um, you know, I think part of what we want to be doing here tonight is, again, just reminding one another right. that it's hard to make the full race, first of all. Right. Let alone with a millstone tied around your neck. But, I mean, we really need to remember that it's the good book we need to get back to. I mean, yeah. if we don't, we could miss, we could miss it all. Yes. And, Right? Absolutely. And, and I think we have to make the time. It, I can't create more time for us and I can't mm, make right. the priority, but we priority. need to make the family first. But that was one of the things I wanted the adults to get something out of this. And I think I shared with you earlier that this was written on an adult level Absolutely. because I wanted the adults to get something out of it at the same time. Uh, it, I, I'd say it's written from people 8 to 80 mm. uh, because any age group can, can read it. An uh, 8 to 12 year old won't be able to read it by themselves. Uh, w the parents can read it with them and they can understand it. I know that because I've taught them for 30 years and they, <laughs> I know they can understand. If you teach it to them, that's my hook is the family reading the Bible together. That, that's, my, that's my passion and that's my that's hook awesome. because if we can get in the Word, I think we can answer your question. It, uh, yeah, I think beautiful. that's so great. Well, I mean, I, I think we're, we have a good message tonight. I mean, a good reminder to all of us and a and a great resource. So they have, your, they have the website, and that's a great uh, place to go to. And um, thank you so much for being part of the program tonight. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you so that's much. Great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So uh, we had a chance to listen to the angels sing earlier. Oh, yes. <laughs> and they brought heaven and, into the studio. And they are <laughs> singing again. Uh, Ayana McDonald and her group, he loves me. Y'all are up. God loves you. He knows you by name. Before the foundation of the world, he knew you and he chose you and he loves you.
Amen and amen. Amen, amen, amen. That was absolutely... He loves us. Oh, man. He loves us. And, and I'm sure you're getting this at home, but boy, in the studio, it's, it's just equally as... Uh, Wonderful. It what is. an absolute blessing. It is, it is. What a blessing. You can hear it and feel it. Amen. <laughs> so uh, we now have uh, the opportunity to talk to another wonderful guest, uh, Pastor she's Tracy Wells White, and she's one of her own who she's, she's been around WATC <laughs> for many, many, many years, and she's got so many great things going on. So with that, yes. Thank you for being part of the program. Thank you. It's a pleasure, always. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> to God be the glory. Absolutely. I, you know, I, when, as we jump in, you have so many things that I think are going to be so much a blessing tonight, this idea that, that, that we need to rest in Christ's promises. We, promise. we need to know that Christ is there for us. We need to have faith to stand in the pocket even when things are crazy, and, and, and by the way, it's probably harder to stand in the pocket when things are great, right? Exactly. So I, I, I want to jump, and I know, Renee, we want to jump right in and, and really get to the, some of the key things you have going on in your ministry and in your world. Would that be okay? Sure. Just jump right always. in with both feet. Well, it's always a pleasure. Thank you. I love TV 57 after 20 years Amen. of Wonderful. broadcasting here. It's nothing but the grace of God that's allowed me this opportunity. But not too many days ago, my church, I pastored downtown Atlanta mm. at 262 James P. Brawley Drive, and then in Milledgeville, Georgia, that's Word of Life, and Atlanta churches live life, which is in a very distressed neighborhood. They're doing renovation and um, revitalizing the neighborhood, but there's still a systematic problem of crime drugs, homelessness, and hopelessness. Mm -hmm. But our church has been set on the hill. We're right on a hill. Mm -hmm. And that's because, like the scripture says, to bring the light. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus is the light of the world. Mm -hmm. And people need to know there is an alternative. Mm -hmm. There is a Christ, a Savior. Well, we were broken into. Mm -hmm. It's not the first time, not even the second or the third, unfortunately. Yeah. But we understand when God's called you to such a type of work in that neighborhood, that it comes with challenges. Mm -hmm. But with the challenge, we have a challenger Amen. to all of life challenges. Amen. And that's what helps us to not only stay, but stay in. Yeah. I just taught a message, how did Mary stay? Yeah. She, she saw the mother of Jesus. Yeah. She saw everything but the Holy Spirit. When she realized that God had called over this assignment, not just to carry Jesus, mm -hmm. the word, but to stick and stay and stand. Amen. Amen. So when we were broken into, I was sitting on my, when I got the phone call, they threw a brick in the window, you know, but this time they took our whole sound system. Mm. And um, I sat right there on my porch. Mm -hmm. My posture and my position did not change. Mm -hmm. And that's what God wants us to know. We cannot change or allow the enemy to change our posture and our position because the promises, which are yea and amen, do not change. Right. So when we trust in the Lord, amen, amen, and lean not to our own limited understanding, mm -hmm. trying to figure out why is it that they would break in when we feed, we clothe, we let them charge their phone when we've been feeding, and helping giving out toiletries for over 14, 15 years. You don't try to figure that out no. because you cannot understand wickedness in high places. Mm -hmm. You know, because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities, rulers of darkness. So we understand. But in the midst of all that, it's still real. Right. That's what someone needs to know. It's real what you're going through, but you have a savior. Right. And he'll make a way of escape. If you yeah. stick, stay and stand still, you will see the goodness of the Lord. In the so, land of the living. And, amen. Amen. <laughs> and I believe to have seen. Amen. amen. So when they did that, um, they took our whole sound system. They took out the Georgia Power Box. Mm. Who does a thing? Amen. But the <laughs> Who enemy. does that? Who does that? <laughs> but in the midst of it, to make a long story short, because I know my time is limited, the Power Box Georgia Power brought us a brand new power box. The enemy did not want, so we had power within two hours. Wow. wow. Um, and I never went down to the church that day. <laughs> oh, no. I was do it, drinking my coffee. That was my day to go to travel to Milledgeville, Georgia, to my church in Milledgeville. I got in my car, but we, I gave instructions. Everyone followed it. We had the, the uh, window replaced the same day, but the sound system. 
the enemy, first of the Lord said, post it on Facebook about what happened to your church. The enemy said, no, you should be ashamed, you know, it's something to hide, but that voice I recognize. You must mm. recognize the voice of the Lord exactly. and you must recognize the voice of the enemy. Amen. He did not want me to share my testimony because he knew he, not all information, but he has some information, mm -hmm. amen, that someone was going to donate. Well, no sooner than 10 minutes that I did that, someone said, we have a complete sound system for you. By the grace so, of God. Grace God. Nobody but God. Mm -hmm. and, and we have someone right now in Florida who's going to drive it up for you. I didn't know that <laughs> then because we were going to that same church. Isn't that wonderful? At the end of June, I said, Lord, well, I can't wait till the end of June to get my new sound system. Right. But we never lost uh, sound. Someone brought something for the Wednesday night brought uh, Wednesday night Bible study. Wow. Someone we brought up our sound system from Millersville Church for Sunday. Wow. Amen. So Amen. we, and so, and not only did my did someone bring it up is here. He has someone assigned to put it and set it all up. Wow. Someone's given us and donated a burglar bar. Yes, that's not pretty, but you have to it's do okay. what you be have safe. to do. You gotta be Amen. safe. You gotta, you do what you have to do. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So we, we, we think it not strange. Yes. We're not daunted. We're not moved. Right. We, I preached just as loud and hard without, cause they <laughs> stuck, they took my mic. Not the, <laughs> not, <laughs> not the music mic, but they right. took my mic. Mm -hmm. I'm reminded of the story when the, the, the man that was calling for Jesus, they told him to be quiet. He cried even louder. I preached so hard Wednesday night, amen, and amen. so loud. I didn't, I didn't, I put the mic down because I wanted to let the enemy know I had already been to Africa. Right. Preach with, in the dark, because you know, there they cut the lights out anytime they want. Mm -hmm. Crowd full of people, oh yes, the government will, at any given moment wow. will cut the lights out. You're wow. in the dark. Well, I, this is nothing new to me. Right. I preach in Africa in the dark with a room full of people. I know they were wondering, now what's she gonna do? <laughs> I preach, preach loud, loud, loud in the dark <laughs> to a crowd of people. So this is nothing new. So when God calls you to an assignment, he's already put something in you that you'll be able to stick, stay, and stand. Cause Amen. he will come, he that shall come, will come. And then he comes with healing. He comes with whatever you have need of. So yeah. there'll be nothing missing and nothing broken. And what the enemy meant for bad, I believe it. Amen. God's turn around. You might not, for your good, you might not understand it then. Amen. Right. But wait, I say, yes. on the Lord and be of a good courage. Exactly. That's the posture. Mm. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Because we all sometimes have to wait mm -hmm. and stay in places. Uh -huh. Who wants to be in a area where crime is so bad or, you know, we would love all to run to the suburbs or go somewhere where we know they're not, you know, everybody's going to be pretty, the ties are going to be, ex ex yeah. you know, extraordinary and all of that. Everyone's yeah. a doctor or lawyer or, or, or Indian chief, <laughs> yeah. but it doesn't work like that for everyone. That's you right. must know your niche, know exactly. where God has called you to be. Amen. Exactly. And if you know where he's called you to be, then you can have a yes, Lord, that surpasses even your understanding and mm -hmm. that yes will come with a peace because he said he'll keep your our hearts and minds in perfect peace if we keep our minds stayed on him mm -hmm. and that is the challenge that in the midst of chaos and calamity keeping your mind on Jesus but I'm reminded of the word I will look to the hills don't look at their faces, he warns us. Don't even look around. Don't look too far back and don't look too far ahead. He said he's a prison help. So you stay right there where you are and he's going to come and, you're, and be a prison help for the present situation you're going through. You may not know Amen. how you're going to get it, yes. how it's going to come. That's right. right. But while you're trying to figure it out, it's not a cliche. He's already worked it out. That's right. I got a phone call. We got you. Amen. We got a sound system. Amen. Amen. Nobody but God. But Amen. in the midst of all of that, you've got to trust him. Because suppose he hadn't done it. I'm reminded of what? When the Daniel said, even if he doesn't do it. That's woo, right. I know he's still what? Yet what? Able. Able. You've got to learn that if, if he didn't supply it. Right. Amen. I'll just talk loud. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you... Because we are really big on keeping secrets. Yes. And secrets make us sick. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And a closed mouth can't get fed. That's so right. I, I, I honor you for your humility and your ability to be vulnerable and to be transparent because that's where God meets us at. 
Exactly. Well, he said he, he who humbles himself will be exalted, and he that exalts himself will be made a base. Exactly. So I know when I, when I spend enough time with God, I know his voice, and then I know the enemy's voice. When he wants me to shut up, that's when I need to speak louder that's or right. proclaim Amen. the goodness of my God. Amen. Mm. Not the goodness of the neighborhood, not how great my faith is, because uh, that little faith is not about the, the size of quant uh, the size of mustard seed. That's about the quantity. It's about the quality Amen. of your faith. Mm -hmm. What are you gonna do with what you have in your hand? Mm -hmm. Be it much or be it little. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Amen. God can take nothing if He took the deep, the dark, and the void and spoke, and it became all of this. That mm -hmm. yet it's still <laughs> working out. So too can he take take great or little things, but the key is give it to him. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And then don't tell him how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> or when, or when to do again? it necessarily. Can you say that again? I, I, look, you see, I raised my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Because we want to get in the way, and sometimes getting in the way will most ninety. Now, for some of the time, getting in the way will we'll, we'll stay God's hand or delay our blessing. Exactly. Sure. And you know that is really a key point, right? Because there are because we're human. Mm, that's right. It. I mean, we 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 understand we need to go to the Lord and ask. Mm -hmm. We un we got that piece. But because we're human, when things aren't in front of us, <laughs> and like you said, things were happening probably well before you even asked. But mm -hmm. things were happening. But because we're human, we're we're ready to then say, well, I, I got to do something else. But that's humanity. That's the humanness yeah. of us. Yeah, yeah. But see, there's the humanity of us. And the spiritual or the D, the, the D and the D and the, the DNA of us and the D and G of us. Yes. I talk about it all the time. The DNA is our mother and our father. Right. But the D and G is the divine nature of God. Exactly. Because he said he breathed into them. Yes. And they became a living soul. Yes. So when we tap into that part of us, then we understand greater is he, the D and G, than the DNA. That's right. And when we look to God, look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, he didn't leave anything undone. And nothing, I tell people, nothing kept catches him unaware. No. He didn't just come to know that this was gonna happen. Oh my goodness, look what happened. I'm surprised, no, <laughs> he's God. That's yeah. right. Amen. That's oh, right. by himself. He already knew because he said with temptation, with, they come together. He'll make a way of escape. Yep. It's yeah, beautiful. absolutely. It's beautiful. You know, and, and I love that we talk about everyone has a faith system, but it's just what is your faith in? And, you know, w with Mr. Michael putting our faith in the Word of God and with you putting Foundation. your faith. You know, it, it has to be the Word of God. It has to be standing on the promises mm -hmm. of God. We need to know what they are and then begin to practice them. That's it. And that's and important. And make them applicable. That's yes. why our fellowship is called Life Churches International Fellowship, where I'm the overseer. I've actually birthed out five churches, wow. but three are still active Thanks you know God. i don't travel to jacksonville as much as i used to but i'm right now working mainly at the atlanta and the milledgeville location but when you understand i could not do this in my humanness yes. it takes faith it takes consultation with god godly counsel mm. that you've seen him do it before Amen. Mm -hmm. he's the same god Amen. he said i change not circumstances of life might change. The climate of our world, our nation, our lives, our, our everything, the dynamics of our lives might change, but we have a consistency. Yes. And my Bible tells me surely, mm -hmm. goodness and mercy, and mercy we'll shall follow, follow me all, all the, the days, days of, my life. of my life, and I shall dwell ha, That's right. Amen. in the house of the Lord Amen. all the days of my life. Of my life. Absolutely. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I want to make sure before our time slips away, we have another couple minutes. Um, I'm, I'm sure there's people listening tonight in the audience saying, I, I would love to get in touch with you. Um, you're, you're an author. You have multiple books. You have had shel uh, women's shelters that you've mm -hmm. personally had under your wing, setting them up, running them. You're a pastor. You have so many things going on. If someone wants to get in touch with you, how do they do that? Well, if they watch the the broadcast, actually, on Thursdays, I'm on here at WATC 
TV 57 at 11 a.m. And as you know, my number's at the bottom of the screen, and I answer that phone, and I take prayer calls, as you all know that. Mm -hmm. You hear my raspy voice. <laughs> <laughs> we love your voice. I, I, I'm learning to love it, because I learn it's, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> and then on Saturdays during the Gaithers with the vignette, every time the Gaithers go to break, it's Let's Talk. That's on Saturdays from 6 to 7 p.m. Awesome. And if they want to call you in the meantime, what number do they call? 678-886-7036. 678-886-7036. And I'll answer. If I'm not answering, plus I'm probably traveling, but leave a message and I, we will call you back. And sometimes if I don't call, I'm just led to pray. Know that. Because mm -hmm. I love to pray because mm -hmm. prayer is open communication with God, and we pray the Word of God, amen? Because when you pray the Word of God, it cannot return empty. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. We're gonna tell you, you are such a, an encourager around the faith, and, Thank you. Um, and I think tonight, it's such a blessing to okay. receive um, such encouragement from thank you. you. Thank you. So thank you so much for being part of the program tonight. Thank you for having me, and I enjoyed you all. Mm -hmm. That's thank you. That's a blessing. Mm -hmm. So we um, we have just a few seconds here, and then we're going to uh, to go on to another portion of the program. So tonight, if you were sitting there and and hopefully receiving tonight the blessings from the program, uh, we would love to pray with you. And the number's on the screen, 770-300-9828. Uh, we have prayer warriors standing by, and uh, we really would love to hear from you. It could be something on your heart that you need attended to. It could be for a neighbor or whomever. Exactly. So. Yeah, because we want to pray with you and we want to pray for you. So please call the number on the screen, 770-300-9828. And our prayer warriors would love to join with you in prayer. And with that, we'll be right back. Amen and amen. Welcome back. You know, we have been so blessed with some great music and some great guests. And now we have an opportunity to talk to the angel and her fellow angels. <laughs> Ayana, you guys sound wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I got to tell you Thank what you a so blessing much. it is to have you all here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. So um, you, you've done a lot with music and I mean, it's so well received that the spirit that comes from you and the group is just remarkable. And I know that 
we're hearing that out in the audience, but could you talk a little bit about your motivation and the group's motivation around kind of what you do and the kinds of things you have going on? Yeah, absolutely. You know, our motivation at the end of the day is, our motivation at the end of the day is to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's Amen. our primary focus and really to inspire and encourage others to live out their purpose and to be the best that they can be. And you know, God does that through a variety of tools and I'm blessed that he's allowed me to be able to share that through music. So my awesome friends are here. Um, they each have their own individual ministries and you know they're lending their gifts tonight. So I'm super honored to have them. They're amazing minstrels and worship leaders in their own right. And so collectively, you know, we just really want to share the message of Christ and, mm. and inspire others to be the best that they can be. Oh, that's awesome. Well, if you want to introduce them real quick, that'd be great. Absolutely. This is the amazing Marilyn Wright, <laughs> Marcus G. Morton, and Becky. Mm. Thank you so much, all of you. What just wonderful. So I, I know there's there's people listening tonight saying, boy, I love what y'all are doing. I love the sound, the the message and all. How would someone get in touch with, with y'all and get to your music and be able to participate in that? Absolutely. Well, my music is available right now on iTunes, so you can go to iTunes directly, type in Ayanna McDonald, and you'll see a plethora of songs there, as well as visit my social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all at Ayanna Mac. Good, 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 good. And, and uh, I know that uh, coming out of this, you're, you guys are sing one more song. Um, what song are you going to sing? So this song is my latest single, Most High God, and I absolutely love it. It's a praise and worship anthem, and we're just de declaring that out of all the other names, out of all the other people that others worship, he is Jesus Christ, the Most High God. Amen and amen. And, and that is such an important message for all of us. Amen? Amen. Well, blessings to each of you. Thanks again for being here. And with that, the angels are singing again. <laughs> amen.
We don't want it to be over. <laughs> don't stop. <laughs> How remarkable, huh? Yes. Oh my goodness. Such an amazing time of being in God's presence and, you know, just the gift of worship and mm. spending time in His presence and being reminded of that. And so we're going to, you know, we're always talking about praying. So we're actually going to share some praise reports from Eva. Um, she got a new car and her daughter graduated, so we just want to praise God for that. Mm -hmm. And we also want to really lift up Mrs. Anita Bixby. We're going to pray and plead the blood and believe God for healing in her body. Mm -hmm. And we have Denise. Um, she actually, um, it, she, she got a new job. And so we just want to thank God, not only for prayer concerns with praise reports. Amen. And so we're just going to go into prayer and just thank God for all these things and believe and touch and agree with you. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, your word tells us that if any two are gathered together mm -hmm. in your name, you should be in our midst. Father, we trust you and we believe you. We know that your word does not return to you void. Yes. Father, thank you for healing in Anita's body. Thank you for blessing Ava with a new car. Thank you for continuing to help and heal us. But most of all, Father, thank you for loving us yes, when we didn't love you and didn't know you. Father, yes, thank you for your word. Help us to understand it. Help us to not approach your word as if it's only a book, but help us yes, to realize it is a love letter from you to us. Yes, Jesus. Not just to know the stories, but to learn the principles. We love you and praise you and glorify you. Don't forget to come back in for the second half of the second show. You're going to be blessed. Amen. Welcome back to Atlanta Live. I'm your co-host, Evangelist Jordan Coletta with JBB Ministries and the Jordan B. Band. We are so glad that you selected to come back to us for our second half. And I'm really blessed to be co-hosting here tonight with... Renee M. Beavers. Amen. <laughs> Renee, it's so good to be co-hosting with you. It's great to co-host with you always. Amen. Thank you. So, uh, you know, in the show, we've been talking about standing on the Word of God, being, being totally confident, even when it's tough to be confident, but being totally confident um, that the Lord Jesus Christ has us covered. And so one of the things we want to do for our second half, we want to take a little time and, and reflect on relationships and rich relationships. And as it turns out, we're blessed that Renee uh, and her husband, Gil, um, that, that's part of their ministry. And so 
uh, we're going to jump right in and um, reflect on how the Lord needs to be brought in and is essential in rich relationships. So with that said, thank you so much. Thank you. It's so, it's such an honor to be able to share something that is so dear to my heart. And I'm, next time we get together, Gil is going to be here for this <laughs> because he's a very important part of it. Uh, we actually have been married for 30, 31 years. And we grew up in a home. His, his mom was divorced and my mom was a single mom. So we had lots of issues growing up um, as far as seeing examples mm. of marriage in our homes. My grandparents were married all of my life. But we didn't have models, and so we made a decision when we were young that when we got married, it was going to be forever. Amen. And, but it's just how do you do that? How do you navigate that? And, you know, my husband always talks about how someone told him, when you get married, work on your marriage. And so God took all of our years of working with couples, doing premarital and doing engaged couples and devitalized couples, and really gave us a heart to share that. Mm. And it was a blessing because it was my husband's idea to do this podcast we're doing. It's called Rich Relationships. Awesome. And it's just providing people with a place, a safe place to really glean biblical principles and godly counsel. That was one of the things that um, Pastor Tracy said about godly counsel, because I believe that there's safety in the, in the multitude of many. It's mm. just a matter of who those people are. And mm. so that's what really rich re re relationship is really about, is giving people a safe place, a healthy place to really just grow and connect and have a community around it. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of times in this busyness of the way things are, um, it's, it's like there are so many opportunities for a relationship to fall apart and, yeah. and not on purpose. I mean, just that it just happens and then you look back over your shoulder and you see kind of these kind of potholes that you fell in um, and then sometimes it feels like it's too late. But to avoid some of that, uh, tonight, what, Renee, what kind of input could you provide? Well, one of the things we always talk about is that marriage is not only a romantic balcony, it is spiritual warfare. Mm, and so awesome. really helping people to get that in their mind and to understand that in order for a marriage to get close, we always use a triangle, God has to be first. Amen. It, you can't go into something that God ordained and created and eliminate him and mm. expect for it to be eternally beneficial. Because I believe that biblical principles work whether you're saved or unsaved. Mm. Fortunately, if you're saved, you benefit in the natural and you benefit in the spirit. But biblical principles work, you know, whether you know the Lord or you don't. But we want to make sure that people know the Lord and that they get to know themselves and they get to know their spouse and they learn about communication and conflict resolution and that they, they understand the importance of listening. Um, we did our first, we released our first podcast on Monday. Amen. And God has blessed us to be on nine different platforms. Um, we have a website and it's just a place for people who are really struggling, you know, because I said that we provide a public pay place for people to get private help. Mm. Because we can be very, very, very private about our pain and our, and our difficulties, especially related to marriage. Certain cultures Absolutely. don't believe in counsel and they don't believe in getting help. Mm. And that's, those are the communities we want to reach the most. And so that's what we really want to do with rich relationships is just provide people with some information and some insights and some examples because my husband and I, not only are we married to one another, we actually like each other, you know, <laughs> and that's, that's a gift. And that's a gift that we want to share with other couples. Cause my husband always says, lots of people have good relationships, but everyone doesn't share that, oh. you know? So he's, he talks about, we need to be able to reverse engineer what works and then share that as like a recipe with people. So it's not that we're doing it because we have all the answers or because we're perfect. It's just that we saw a need and we felt God calling us. Those are the things we heard in the first half of the show, the passion of your call. You know, it, it could allow you to write a book that you don't see the results of, or it could, uh, it could call you to be in an environment that might not be the most ideal. But when you're driven by your passion, it gives you the power and it gives you the longevity to do the unthinkable and to do the things that may seem impossible to do. Yeah, that's, that is awesome. And, and you know, I love the, the way you position it, because let's face it, a marriage or a relationship, I don't have to be marriage, it could just yes. be a relationship. Mother, right? daughter, husband, wife, sister, brother, cousins, aunts, uncles. Right, right, right. I, you know, what I, 
I love about the way you approach it is you're not the expert, but there's a lot of things that you can help kind of reveal, right? Because mm -hmm. let's face it, here's the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, mm -hmm. laying down on his back, and you can just envision it, his hands are out like this, his feet are probably touching one another, and here's someone standing over him, mm -hmm. a large centurion I always envision, yeah. with this giant stake, essentially, we call it a nail, but I mean, it had to hold him up on the cross, yeah. and here he is beating this through the Lord's hands and then into a piece of wood, mm -hmm and say, you know, that's love, because he's dying for that individual who's pounding and, and causing all this pain for him, mm -hmm. but yet the Lord takes that pain. And, and yeah. so there's so many rich examples in the Bible of how the Lord shows us of love. And, and I could see where you and your husband, Gil, take those essentials and say, let's parallel. You may yeah. never thought of this, but let's bring them into the marriage, bring them into the relationship, and, and see how that allows us to flourish, even when the relationship could be rocky. Yeah. Is that fair to say? Yes. And you know, like you said, I, I really believe that that's a part of the problem. I don't think that God calls people to be experts. Mm. I think that God calls people to be examples. Because the Bible says that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Mm. He could have just s sent the Word, but he sent God in the flesh to show as an example of what he was. And all those Bible stories are not just stories. Amen. They're principles and there are people to show us that, you know what? You're not the first person to go through this and you won't be the last. <laughs> and so I believe that what God has given us is 37 years of evidence mm. that we might know a little bit about what it takes to have healthy, rich relationships. And that is our hearts. That's our heart's purpose. That's our heart's pleasure, is to continue to help people get to a place of intimacy and get to a place of transparency and get to a place of beginning to know the God who created them. Because if God created us, he has a plan for us, he has a mate for us, he has a destiny for us. And sometimes, like you said, it might be rocky, it might be difficult, but you, you have to learn that even in the difficulties, God doesn't waste anything. Mm. There's nothing he allows us to go through. And I was reading today, it said that um, something with a crack in it doesn't mean it's gonna break. Something with a crack in it just means it's gone through something. Ah, awesome. And so I don't think that God uses perfect people. I think that God uses dead people, <laughs> dead to your own ideas and your own philosophies and your own, um, your, your own desire to be perfect. Yeah, yeah, you know? well said. Yeah. Well, look at his apostles. Yeah. They weren't perfect, they were fishermen by no. and large, right? So um, I think the other thing that's kind of an, an awesome opportunity tonight is we could have people listening to the program, listening yes. to you, and 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 I would I don't I'd love to take like two different ex, uh, scenarios and have you speak to the individual. Okay. So, on one would be what what do you say to someone who's listening tonight, um, and maybe has a lot of friction in a relationship. Let's say it's a it could be a, a son or daughter, it could be an aunt, uncle, whomever. Um, and, and so there, it's, the relationship's not going well. It could be a bitter disagreement. Mm -hmm. uh, there could be some things that now have been said that can't be taken back. Inside, the, there's still love for one another, but yet it's as turbulent as can be. And I know we want to stand on the promise of Jesus. How do you execute and go from that scenario to a rich relationship? What are the, how would you start? What are the first couple steps? Where, where would you bring that? Well, you know, the first step in any sort of um, dealing with an issue or a problem is forgiveness, mm. forgiving yourself, mm. forgiving the other person, accepting and owning your part in it. Because I think that when things happen, the Bible doesn't say go to your brother if you think he did something to you. The it says go to him if you have all against them. And I think sometimes we go to people, well, what's wrong? What did I do? What did I do? And it may have nothing to do with you. Mm. And so I think it's important that we understand forgiveness, that we understand that sometimes with forgiveness there is not reconciliation because you may love someone, but love has to be folded with trust 
and respect. Uh -huh. And so I think that as we begin to really look at just the simplicity of what forgiveness is about, and it doesn't mean that you forget, it means that you remember your part, you take responsibility for that. And then you begin to go to the other person and you talk to them about how what they did made you feel. Mm. Not being, not accusing them, not going to somebody else about it. You know, a lot of times relationships that are complicated get more complicated because we invite other people into it. Uh -huh. And it's better to go to that person Maybe not right away after you've had time to really think about it and examine yourself and say, what's my part in this? And then that way it allows you to have a, a, a resolve that's beneficial. Because sometimes the healthiest relationships are the ones that you realize that you might not be able to be close to that person. And I think it's understanding, because I think sometimes as Christians we think that forgiveness is reconciliation. Mm. And sometimes you have to, you know, agree to disagree and to keep the distance until both parties have really um, grown and matured, because that's a big part of, you know, having healthy mm. relationships. Because I think family dynamics are also based on, you know, your experiences and your culture and all those things come to play. So I think that the healthiest way to deal with a conflict or a difficult relationship is one, to own your part, to forgive the person, and then to kind of let them lead to see if you both want the same thing. Mm. Because you might want to reconcile and they might not want to reconcile. And so that's a part of it is being honest about what forgiveness really is. And I think we really sometimes struggle with understanding the difference between forgiveness and reconciliation. Yeah, well said, well said. The other thing that was crossed my mind as you were describing that, and, and some of this is to try to get around kind, kind of the, the human nature that we have, which is those situations just can drive us crazy, right? Yes. Conflict, by and large, um, as, as humans, we don't necessarily, most of us don't like when things are, you know, turbulent. Mm -hmm. So uh, my point of that is to say, and what I kind of also was sensing as you were describing kind of the mechanics of that process is then overarching it or foundational to constantly lift up that other person. Mm -hmm. I mean, like you said, get rid of the personal piece and, and who's right, who's yes. wrong, right? But, but now bring in the Lord and pray that the Holy Spirit just resolves this, that he, he gives you both Mm -hmm. Peace in your heart about your yes, heart. Th yes, that's where I was, I was going. Yeah. So I guess if you don't do that, what was going through my mind as you were describing it is, is it's almost like you, you would get ate up or you brood or you, you start feeling really down about mm -hmm. the whole thing when you really just got to put it in the Lord's hands, you right? Accept your peace, mm -hmm. uh, talk to the person if it's time. Exactly. Um, that, but put it in the Lord's hands, say, please, Lord, resolve this, and I know you'll do it. Is that fair to say? Yeah. And the thing about when conflicts come up, you can't hate someone and pray for them every day. Praying for people that you are in conflict with is for you mm. because it keeps your heart right. It keeps your mind right. And it also keeps you. I love that Tracy talked about, Pastor Tracy talked about the posture. Yes. Our posture is so important. Mm. Our attitude, how we respond. You know, when situations come up, I always say, what could I have done different? Uh -huh you know, owning it, because that's a part of being an adult is taking responsibility for your part in things. Mm. And so I think as you learn to do that and you realize that at the end of the day, God loves people. He's in the relationship. This whole gospel, this whole Jesus died on the cross was about a heavenly father who wants a relationship with his children. Amen. And we remember that and we remember that God is in the God is in the business of not business. He's in the business of relationships. It's his heart <laughs> that we are not you know, transactional, that we're not only thinking about what we're going to get out of it, we, we go into relationships. Because I always say that God's power is love and that the way he expresses that love is with people mm. and that the way that we express our love that God has given us is through serving. Well and said. so we, we, we have to know that God loves us and the power is love and that we have to know that he cares about us serving and being in relationships with people because that's really what the gospel is really all about. Mm. Well said. So if, if we could bring in that second scenario, now it's, now it's a husband and a wife or it's two significant others, uh, two people, significant others. Um, how, how, do you, how do you address that? Is it the same set of principles or anything different that you? Well, you know, the marriage relationship is different. The marriage relationship, and my husband says it so well, 
the marriage relationship is the one relationship that you choose. Mm. Because see, your cousins, your brothers, and your sisters, you didn't get to choose them. <laughs> <laughs> but you get to choose your spouse. And so one of the things that Gil and I have always been really big on um, was respect, love, and trust. And understanding that you have to go into a marriage relationship with the mindset that I'm on your team, I'm not trying to hurt you. I may say some things you may not like, mm. and they make you feel uncomfortable, but it's not to hurt you, it's to help you. And so I think that a, a big part of in, in conflict in marriage is you have to realize that marriage is forever. You know, it's until death do us part. Now, unless there's abuse and there's other things that are going sure, on, sure. God is not, um, he's not surprised by human behavior, but he wants us to allow the Holy Spirit to, em to empower us to be able to deal with things in a way that it brings him glory. Mm -hmm. And it still brings value to us. And so I think that in marriage relationships, we have to kind of approach conflict a little different than we do because there's going to be a level of transparency you're going to have with your spouse you won't have with anybody else yeah absolutely yeah. well um we're going to come back and fun, kind of finish this up i know okay. we're going to get a chance to listen to one more angel Wonderful. sing Yay. <laughs> um so um hold that thought I we'll be right back on this so with that we're going to get a chance to listen to micah stampley sing sing hallelujah take it away micah oh. All creation, every knee shall bow, every tongue must confess that He is Lord. So we join together every culture, every nationality. From the earth, we proclaim your majesty. Behold the The Lamb of Royal Deity, there is none like you who is faithful and true. In your word, we find grace, peace, and strength. Yeah! 
And Micah, that was absolutely incredible. Another angel singing, huh? Yes, amazing. Amen. That was beautiful. So uh, we get a minute here. Let's wrap up our, our conversation with Renee around rich relationships. I think one of the things I want to make sure we do, Renee, before we wrap the show up tonight is to make sure that anyone listening who maybe wants to get to your podcast or wants you to come out and do a a marriage uh, enrichment course or have you come out and talk or whatever. Yes. How do they do that? How do they get in touch um, with you? They can Gail? actually go to our website. Our okay. website is richrelationshipsus.com um, and we actually, they can actually give us a call at 404-936-1642 or they can also send us an email to richrelationships.us at gmail.com. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. That's great. Thank you so yeah. much for sharing it's that. It's our that was pleasure. Awesome. It's our pleasure. It's our pleasure. It's so, today's show has been utterly amazing. And there's been so many examples of God's faithfulness and mm. his love and his truth and his principles. And so I would hope that after hearing today's show, that people would do something different. That they mm -hmm. would take the things that they've heard and that they would make it their own. Because we serve a God who says that he wants us to not just be hearers, but he wants us to be doers. And so we've got lots of things that we can do now. We can read the word of God. We can share our story. We can even work on our relationships. We can become a worshiper. And so that's really God's heart. And so I hope that we would continue to pray and believe God, but most of all, that we'd be able to trust in him and trust in his faithfulness and that he loves us and he has a purpose and a plan for us and that we would live our lives with that truth resonating in our lives. That's awesome. And, and, I'll, and I want to add that when we talk about that trust is um, almost, and it's hard to do. It's hard to do, especially when as a human being, we have, you know, we have some anxiety, something going on, but the trust being kind of sinking in to an absolute confidence yes. 
that the unshakable Lord, covenant. unshakable covenant, which is tough to do, right? Because yeah. it, it's different if you can see things or you can see things coming together. What we're talking about is because he lives, because he has promises for us, because he's set the many, many examples through yes. the, 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 the written word that, that we can go with just absolute certainty, yes. right, Renee? Yes. That he's got it covered. That's right. And, and when the devil shakes us and tries to push us and says, well, that's not going to happen, well, then we bind Satan in the name in of the Jesus name of Christ. Jesus. Amen. And we command him never to return because Amen. we're going to claim the victory in, in Jesus. Jesus name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we hope that tonight, as Renee has said, that, that, that the Lord has, has lifted you up and lifted up your heart and your soul and given you a, a focus of him. Uh, we saw that prayer warriors standing by. If you want to call in 770-300-9828. We pray that the Lord Jesus Christ continues amen. to bless you. Amen. Amen. And amen.